Michelle, would you mind doing some freeform wrapping or beatbox while people are joining? All right, we've got people coming in. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning. How are you? Good. We, right. love, we love our early birds. I might have to make mine just a, not a video. I just got back from a walk in the rain. <laughs> we, we, we'll take it. We need faces, <laughs> right? Zoom after Zoom, and if if there's if there's no faces out there, it gets it gets a little hard to keep going. I know, I know. Um, and are you are you joining us from Chicago, or where are you? Yes. All right. And I, tell me, remind me about your business. Oh, it's uh, cards, uh, Heavenly Debbie cards. Right, right. I met you at the the the. Yes. The yes. Oh my God, that feels like a whole lifetime ago, doesn't it? Oh no, it does. When we were allowed to go outside and be in the same room? Yes. Um, how are the other ladies doing? Have you connected with them or? Oh, um, I don't know. I've seen a couple of them on, on, on Zoom um, things. So I think um, we were supposed to be having something once a month, but then that kind of, you know, became a Zoom meeting and some people were on it and sometimes not. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure how, um, but I think everybody's doing okay. Good. I how many people on this one? I didn't know if anybody from here was going to be on also. Um, um, so we've got about 30 people that are registered. So oh, wow. Okay. I think that more of them would actually be on by now. Um, I'm wondering, Michelle, um, I'm going to hop onto Eventbrite and just send out an email. Yeah, we had some issues with the technical side of things yesterday. Maybe people are having the same problem. Um, yeah, for some reason, the, whatever security measures Zoom is trying to do is messing with, uh, how people are logging on. So we're going to send just a quick email direct from, uh, did you get your email from Eventbrite? Mm -hmm. Debbie? Yes. It was easy to come through. So strange. All right, and I'm going to send this just real quickly from my personal and my and Eventbrite just to make sure. We've got Kate on. Hey, Kate. Hi, how's it going? Awesome. It's wonderful to see you again. Mm -hmm. And good morning, Stan. This may this may be just kind of one of those mornings. Um, I know we've had. Uh, it was funny. It was like last last week, everybody slowed down a bit. And then this week, it seemed like everybody kind of picked up and then the tech picked everybody's butt. <laughs> it's always fun to watch the flow of these things. Wow. But great to see you, man. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. This is great. I was actually just musing with uh, with my team this morning that I, I should reach out to uh, to Sprout because we're looking to do a how great teams work together webinar um, after next week. And you guys have done a spectacular job of, of shifting and the, the conference that you held was awesome. 
Yeah, that was great. I was we were I was just on a team meeting and uh, we were chatting about that with some of the folks that were on the panels. It was uh, it was a great session. Yeah, it was it was awesome and it was beautifully done. Um, for those of you that don't know, Buck he is with Sprout Social, which is a um, a partner of ours and a fantastic organization here in Chicago. That I don't know how they do it, man, but they're always ahead of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> good good leadership, that's for sure. That's awesome. And Megan, I see you on. Good morning. Um, I know, good morning. We're gonna we're gonna give it like another three minutes. We've got a lot of people that are registered, but we know that um, Zoom has been having some issues with how they're keeping their links alive, which is always fun. So I'm gonna shoot out one more email just to make sure that folks have this link. Um, but I'm really excited to get started. We've got some really great content for you. Um, and this morning, I know that um, we're gonna take a little bit of a different spin on what's happening psychologically and emotionally during this time and how that impacts just getting through a day. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, people's brains are working a little differently, <laughs> if at all, lately. Mm -hmm. um, so just a, hey, Sally. Hi. For joining us. Sally. Thanks. Hi. And for those of you that are popping on, um, I'm gonna ask a special favor because it is so hard to talk into the abyss when we can't see anybody's faces. If you are able to turn on your, your camera, even if your makeup ain't done and your hair is a mess, we'll take it. Even just some good eyebrows help tremendously. Okay. Good morning, Stan. Are you, Stan, are you having trouble with audio? I'm gonna take that as a yes. Um, and good morning, Kathy. We're going to start in about two minutes. And we also have a special guest that will be joining us today. Good morning, Sally. All right. And it, just as a little bit of housekeeping, guys, I know that um, it's always, there seems to be a little bit of uh, a different rules for the road with every Zoom meeting that folks are attending right now. And so I just wanted to kind of let you know how we're going to flow through. When we start, we're going to we're going to put everybody on mute. If you want to if you want to chime in in the next 2 minutes, this is your golden opportunity to introduce yourself and and say hi to folks. And then um as we as the uh, presentations are going on, which are going to be about 15 minutes a piece, Go ahead and put your questions into the chat box. We're gonna make sure that we get to those before we go on to the next step. And then also make sure that you get connected with um, today's speaker so that if you have additional questions or follow-up that you wanna do, that that's there and available for you. But if you need to, um, if, if, if when we unmute during that Q&A session and call, call your name, please feel free to, to ask a deeper question during that time. And if you happen to be in a situation where all of your dogs and children are losing their minds, we will let you know and help you mute again. <laughs> so that we can keep some good audio going. And I've got a special introduction for this morning. I've got a co-host today with me. Hi. She's gonna be helping to do the introductions and make sure that we stay in line. She's, uh, she's, She's spoken with me on stages in front of about 300 or more people, at least twice so far. And she is just going into uh, getting ready for the third grade. We're, we're done with the second grade. We're done with all of it. No, not yet. Two more weeks. You're absolutely correct. Two more weeks? Sorry. Was that a surprise to you? I apologize. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, listen, let's let's get started. We know that this is going to be recorded. So a lot of folks are going to be able to, hey, Elizabeth, um, are, are going to be um, kind of taking those recordings in. But 
I'm thrilled to have all of you here. Hi, Rena. Um, it's great to see you here as well. This, this session is really important to me um, because one of, the, one of the things that became really evident to me as we started going through all of the changes that have happened in our lives is that people are experiencing a tremendous amount of loss. And having been through what I've been through in my life, the first thing that came up for me is that this feels just like grief. This feels like the fatigue that grief brings, like the, the, the cloud that kind of comes around your head when you're going through losing someone that you love. And in a way, because I had been through it, unfortunately, frequently in the past couple of years, I knew that I had some tools that were gonna help keep me focused, but that most people don't talk about grief, don't talk about loss. And it's almost as if when someone is grieving because people don't know what to say, people back away like it's something that they could catch, right? And so I thought it would be a really unique opportunity to be able to bring in um, an expert in what it actually is to deal with those emotions and be able to work them forward and care for yourself and, and get those faculties back so that we can continue to achieve at the level that as professionals, we're used to achieving. I don't know about you guys, but when my goals are set, my goals are set and I got stuff to do. And I've got a lot on my plate. And if I'm not on top of my, my emotions and my time management, I'm not gonna get there. And I was very, very blessed to be introduced to Morelda Rodriguez, who is joining us today. Um, and I think that you are going to just take so much away from what she's about to share with you. We're gonna make sure that you get her information after the event, but I, I wanna just give you a little view of what makes Merelda such an incredible expert in this particular space. So she's the owner of Move Beyond Grief and is a mas grief massage therapist, right? And that's kind of a new concept for most people. And obviously massage, not exactly happening a lot right now. But she's also a neuro neuromuscular therapist and a functional medicine certified health coach, author, speaker, traveler, and a, she calls it a culinary enthusiast. I call it a girl that likes snacks. But she's got 20 years of experience in the health and wellness space. And through her grief and wellness coaching programs, Marilda helps clients not only just focus on the emotion, but the lifestyle the food, the, the processes that are, are necessary for living that vital life and staying healthy while adapting to moving through the grief and provides them with the space, the tools, and the resources to come back into their lives and to even elevate from where they are and honor their loss, but find their sense of self. And I think that is so incredibly important right now. Um, we can't look at our experience right now and compartmentalize it. It's gonna affect how you see yourself, how you see your family members, um, and how you see the work that you're doing. And so I wanted to, actually, I'm just thrilled to be able to start with her insights and then be able to wrap some really technical but applicable tools to continue to move towards some of the goal setting that we spoke about last week. So without further ado, Merelda. Hi everybody, how are you this morning? Um, I'm gonna just start really quick with asking you to give yourself a pat on the back, a hug, uh, whatever you need to do, give yourself a self hug. We have come through eight weeks of stuff we've never done before, right? Self isolation, masks, um, you know, just wear your gloves, stand six feet apart, <laughs> the protocol that we have had to come through and the unbelievable number of that word, that P word, the pivots we've all done in the last eight weeks. 
so today what I want to do is I want to just give you a sense of um, where we are in terms of this whole loss that we're experiencing. The biggest loss you're probably experiencing is the loss of your freedom. Now, some interesting terms have come to light in this space with the pandemic. And I'm just going to talk about two of them to just get started. The first one that a lot of people seem to be facing with these changes is something that we call relentless stress. So we've had stress every day. We know what that's like. It's hectic. We run around, we think about things, we do a lot of things. But the thing about stress is that we have a sense of recovery, right? We come home, we could kick our shoes off, wear our like big loose pants, uh, that kind of thing. And we're good. And the next day we know what we're going to do. But in these high levels of uncertainty and change, it seems like no matter what we do, we still seem to be so far behind. And we still have to pivot. And we still have to, we're still far behind. So where do we turn? So this sort of reduces the recovery from that stress, but it keeps the stress going. So when you have a stressor that is exceeding the recovery, you have something that's called relentless stress. It's relentless, it's there all the time. And then on top of that, we have sort of this global event, right? So what's happening, we're looking at other countries like, oh, do they have a rise in the, um, debts or infections or is it coming here where's a hot spot and you know we're having to take all that information in but that tremendous loss of life is also affecting us so if you found yourself recently feeling either overly exhausted or like your brain is really foggy um you're feeling sort of heavy like that humidity is un not leaving you for the summer that kind of heavy on you like a blanket um, that's what we call collective grief. Collectively, we are experiencing a loss. And let me just address what grief truly is in terms of loss. It's not just like, oh, I lost someone or I lost a pet. It's a loss of something that we are emotionally attached to. So if we're not emotionally attached or emotionally invested in something, chances are we don't care. Like that bad pizza joint down the street closed, we don't care. But when it's something like, you know, your um, favorite china fell on the floor and shattered, you're just like, oh my God, I lost that. So it's something that you have to be emotionally vested in. So let's talk a little bit about what happens when these uncertain things happen to us. And I want to talk about energy because energy is our fuel that keeps us going through this time frame, right? So I want to talk a little bit about energy, how we're using it, how we're losing it, and what's going to keep us um, sort of on that full tank of energy. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, where we might be losing our energy in this time frame. So I want to talk a little bit about the brain and how it looks at this. So every time you have an unknown uh, that's thrown at you, whether it's in a familiar space like your job or an unknown, big unknown like this pandemic, whenever you're faced with a question, your brain opens up a ticket, just like when you have a call center. And this ticket is called an open loop. So when you have an open loop, your brain starts to process, doing its job processing to find where it can get the answer because the brain loves efficiency and familiarity. So it's gonna to try to close these loops. And when it closes, when it's going through its process of trying to find the answer, it's using energy. Now, if you have a number of tabs, for example, open on your computer, what happens after a while? It slows it down. And this is exactly what happens in the brain. It doesn't know which one you want to address. And so these open loops start using energy that could be going elsewhere and starts draining you. So this is what we call energy leaks. Now, where could you be losing energy? It's either going to be through worry, procrastination, rumination, toleration. Uh, you know, what are you tolerating that you're not addressing? Because when you address it, you close the loop. 
What is it that you're procrastinating? Because when you do it, you close the loop. So when these things are hovering around in open tabs and open loops, you're draining energy. So let me kind of move through what exactly it takes to keep this energy level used efficiently. So the one thing that's going to help you is what's called a to be list. So I'm kind of curious if you want to just raise your hand and tell me if you have a to do list. Does everybody have a to do list maybe? Yeah. So I want you to tell me if you have a to be list. Anybody? Okay, so let's look at what a to be list is. A to be list is you decide how you want to be for that day or through the time that you're in your activity. How do you want to be? So being words could be, I want to be mindful. I want to be appreciative. I want to be productive. I want to be uh, aware. Uh, I want to be thoughtful. I want to be kind. Uh, so these are your to be words. So when you have a to be list, it starts to put the brain in a bit of a, um, it brings the guard down. Every time you have an open tab, you have that fight or flight starts to happen because your brain is in unknowns. When you start looking at a to be list, your brain comes to some area of familiarity. You know how to be kind. You know how to be thoughtful. You know how to uh, be mindful. You may not have done something about it lately, but, but you know innately how to be that way. So I recommend making a list of your to be's. How do you like to be? And on any given day, I recommend picking three ways to be. How do you want to be? Just so that you're not cluttering your head with like a zillion ways to be. Um, so once you decide how you want to be, then go to your to be list. I'm sorry, in, uh, go to your to do list. Just enough information to get the community speaking. You don't need as much information as you think. Um, go to your to-do list and decide which of those tasks are going to get you to your to be the fastest. When you get there the fastest, you create quick wins. And when you create quick wins, you start to feel encouraged and close loops. When you close loops, you retain your energy, you conserve your energy, and you're able to use it um, elsewhere. So, um, what I really like to do is have some time that I know what my two B's are. I will look at my tasks. I will try to match them up, see what's going to get me there the fastest, um, and then adjust accordingly with my wins. Because now my brain is a little bit off that fight or flight uh, journey and it's able to think better. So now where are we getting this energy? Obviously, we're not sticking our finger in a socket and plugging in, right? So where are we getting this energy? It has to come from some place. Where's the pot of energy? And that is what I call the energy bank. All of us have energy banks, and we have to replenish that energy bank just like any bank every single day. And there are five ways that can get us there really quickly. Um, the first one is your mindset doing something that is inspiring to you or allows you to be creative, allows you to add deposits to your energy bank. The second one is your nutrition. When you have the right nutrition, food is mood. So when you have the right nutrition, whether it's vegetables, uh, um, fruits, uh, any kind of nourishment that is not preservative laden, that you are able to uh, give yourself on a um, somewhat ongoing basis, that's going to add to your energy bank. Sleep. Sleep is huge. Sleep is your brain health 100%. So sleep is where you are definitely adding to your energy bank. Uh, the next one is movement. Tony Robbins says, uh, motion moves emotion, and that is so true. You have to move. So if you're in a slump, even though it feels like, oh my God, I can't get off the couch, um, at least move and walk around your living room. Um, 
or do some squats or do a push up or two or a jumping jack. Something will move the energy. So movement is so important to add to your energy bank. And the last one is connection. When you connect, whether it's someone in your midst, maybe you have a family member like um, Marie has Lily. So maybe you have somebody uh, that's your family member or you are able to connect by a phone call or you're able to talk to someone on Zoom that is not a work call, that is just a, oh my God, let me download, let's eat dinner together. Um, I do dinner dates with my friends all the time, even before the pandemic, because my family lives around the planet. So <laughs> I have to catch up on Zoom all the time. So uh, that's my connection. Some people have pets, you, you know, you, you're done with your work day or your pet sitting by you and you engage with your pet, but you need to have a connection and that adds to your energy bank. So this is where you want to draw upon. So what I want to leave you with is when you are in that state of worry or panic is to see if you can find a way to be and start working backwards from that and seeing what will get you there to be where you need to be because when you decide in favor of doing you're deciding in favor of open loops and stress and when you're deciding in favor of uh, closing your loops and being you are bringing that stress down so that's what i have for you so we had a great question from Marina, and she was asking if there are certain words that don't work for the two lists because they're too loaded, such as I want to be productive. And like, are, as, there, as there are expectations with the to be part of that, that it's kind of like in the future as opposed to in the present. What are your thoughts on that? So your to be could be what do you want to be right now? It doesn't have to be what do you want to be you know, later. It's what do you want to be right now? What do you want to be today? So bring it to the present. Um, and when you bring it to the present, you can use whatever words. So productive could be my word. You might have your own words, right? That um, how do you want to be? Uh, but you want to keep it in the present. So because future thinking does activate that open loop, like where am I going to get it? When am I going to do this? And now it starts going down that um, open loop a road. So in order to keep it, you have to bring it closer to you. Did that answer the question? Rena, um, do you want to unmute? Did, did that answer your question? She says, yes, I think so. Okay. And just as we're looking at being able to, to feed that purpose, I know we hear about, my gosh, we hear about self-care all the time. And there's all of these expectations that people are putting on themselves to come out of COVID like better than they went in. And, you know, like my thought is like, calm down, Karen, nobody gets to be the best pandemic mom. Like just, we need to take it down a level. Where do you kind of put that? Okay. I know I need self care, but it's so different right now. How do I make it register as self care? Excuse me, that's why I um, mentioned those five areas and doing something that's the smallest win. So I'm always about the smallest win. If you had breakfast today, great, that's a win. If you, um, you know, uh, took a nap, that's a huge win. Uh, so I look at, if you want to look at these five areas and in, you know, it might take you about 10, 15 minutes to just jot down what might be quick wins in these areas. That way you're not having to think about it when you're on top of it. That makes a lot of sense. And I think one of the things that, that resonates with me too is when, you, when you've got an opportunity to mentally celebrate the win, it ties it in so much more because there's a celebration there. And let's face it, we don't exactly have a lot of people to high five these days. If you, you know, if you close a big deal or if you, if you get through a project that you didn't want to do, it's just you. So thank you. Like I, so much of that resonated with me. And I know that we've had a, a lot of people in here that are, ha I mean, who's having trouble sleeping, right? Like it's just, it's, it's, it's way different. And there's times when I find myself standing in the kitchen for like five minutes, just staring at different parts of it, trying to figure out what my next step is to make dinner. And 
we've made dinner hundreds of hundreds of times, but everything feels so different. So I think, thank you so much for those tools. And guys, if you want to follow up on those tools, I highly recommend um, just reaching out to Merelda. She's got a tremendous amount of resources and experience. And um, I know that for me, I don't think we would be getting through this if we weren't looking at the emotional side of what we've got to deal with before we can be ourselves again. So, um, Merelda, thank you. I'm going to introduce uh, our, our next introducer, who is uh, a very dear friend of mine. And she is going to do my introduction for today. So, Lily, can you come stand over here, please? And we're going to take the camera down for just a second. Come on, you're on, girl. Here's your script. You ready? Yeah. All right. There you go. Who am I? My name is Lily. Nice and loud. Who am I? My name is Lily. And you are? And I'm an... And... Come on, you gotta go. And I am the owner of... Lily and Violet's dog treats. This is my mom. What my mom does runs two businesses, selling, marketing, dog treats. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You did a good job. Okay, everybody's clapping for you. Good job. Now go to your schoolwork. Um, so, for those of you that, that have kind of been with me on my, my various journeys, I know Elizabeth has, has been a friend uh, for uh, 15, 20 years now, um, and <laughs> seen, uh, seen all of the iterations of my, my journey in entrepreneurialism. And one of the things that has always been part of my makeup is that I, I never really do just one thing. My mind is always wanting to take on that next challenge, take on that, that next opportunity for helping our company succeed, for helping other companies succeed. And when you're looking at the logistics of not only being a business owner, but being responsible for the results of sales and marketing in seven to 12 businesses at, the, at a time, that can put a tremendous amount on the desk. One of the things that has gotten me through everything that I've been through is the structures that I've put around time management and prioritization and being able to stay focused. And I didn't learn until I was into my adult life that I had actually been battling dyslexia and ADD. And I had gone through uh, some, some Franklin Covey training when I was about 19 years old. Thank you to, um, to, to Gail Vanden Homburg for pushing me through that because it taught me that there are absolute tools that you can use to train your, your mind and your subconscious mind to be able to continue to achieve and accomplish even when everything goes wrong. And one of the things that I shared at the end of our last session was that um, when, my, when my life partner and business partner passed suddenly after seven months after we had opened our business, of course, I was in a tremendous fog. And when I sat, that was in February. And when I sat down in December to reassess my goals and look at things, I realized that I'd actually accomplished everything that we had planned to do in the timeline that we had planned to do it for the business, which was an astounding moment for me. Just to be able to, to realize that even though I didn't have my eye on where I was to be and what I was to do every second like I used to, because I had ingrained the processes so deeply in my subconscious, my subconscious mind was able to carry me through when I wasn't strong enough to carry myself and it kept me focused. And so last week we talked about really realigning our goals because they have to stay attainable and realistic. And in the current change, attainable and realistic has changed. 
So I hope that you had a chance to kind of look at those pieces because we're going to talk about how to train yourself to get to those pieces and to get those wins and get those wins so you start a machine of accomplishment that carries you through. And so I am going to share screen here. Um, and please excuse me, I just realized for some reason that I'm going to need to share my whole screen for a hot sack. Because I was making sure that our Facebook was working perfectly. So in our session last time, we were talking about the, um, really the ability to see our goals for what they need to be now so that we can align, so that we can bring ourselves there with purpose. And being on purpose, just like Meralda says, it means taking care of yourself first. You are the ax and you can either go out to that tree and hack away at it for hours and hours and exhaust yourself, or you can take a minute to sharpen the ax and get in there and get it done in half the time with half the effort. And that really truly is about self-care and what self-care means to you. And one of the, the, the pieces that I know has been missing, at least on, on my end, is being able to register that self-care as like, okay, this is, this is actually good for me. This is actually something that is beneficial. And I can check it off and know that that, that was a win for me. So Marelda, thank you for that. That one piece is going to make such an impact in, in how I practice. But as we start going into this, how do I fit everything in? And you can see that right now I'm, Grandma left this morning. Grandma's been here since lockdown happened. So we've got lifestyles right now that are bizarre. Because I can tell you not once in my life did I say, oh boy, I would like to run a small business and be a homeschool teacher because that's going to get me where I want to go. It's just not. And so as we start looking at our prioritization and, and being able to fit everything, we've got to be able to pull it apart in a way that is going to allow us to pull down on procrastination, pull down on the things that are keeping us busy, but not getting us there. So I want to share this video with you. It's, it is the art of manliness. I, I don't consider this a strictly manly trait, but he's the best person to explain. Oh, hello there. Brett McGayer from theartofmanliness.com. Caught me in the middle of an experiment. Do you guys ever feel like you're busy all day? You're answering email. You're just, you feel busy. But at the end of the day, you feel like you didn't accomplish anything. Well, there's a reason why you feel like that. And I'm going to do a little object lesson or experiment to show you why that is. Ay, Dios mio. I did not do that. Nobody saw that. I tried to close the ad. My, my, my fault. Come on, man. My apologies, technical difficulties. busy all day you're answering email you're just you feel busy but at the end of the day you feel like you didn't accomplish anything well there's a reason why you feel like that and i'm going to do a little object lesson or experiment to show you why that is we're going to say that this jar represents your life or your calendar or your schedule and the way most people go about their life is they fill it up first with stuff that's not very important and that's going to be represented by this water so this is like surfing the internet checking out reddit checking out buzzfeed don't do that anymore quit checking buzzfeed stuff that adds really no value to your life and then what they do is they do stuff that's a little bit more important that has some value but really not much and that's good that's represented by this sand so this is you know answering some work email that 
really could have been answered, you know, done over the phone in five minutes, but it's turned into 50 different emails. This is like when you're, you're doing uh, research on the internet, but then you somehow end up back at those time wasting sites. So that's the sand. And then we start doing stuff that's, you know, a little bit more important, but not all that important. That's represented by this gravel. So, you know, this could be probably a lot of busy work that a lot of people do. All right. So, it's, you know, stuff that has some value, but not all that much. And then you realize, man, I haven't done anything. I've been really busy, but I haven't gotten any work done. I got to do, focus on those really important things. So you try to cram those big rocks in. Those big rocks are the most important thing in your life. It could be things like family. It could be your health, your spirituality. It could also be tasks um, and work or in class that will bring you closer to your goal. So you try to cram that in into your calendar or your schedule. You quickly realize there's no room in your calendar because you filled it up with all this other stuff that's not really important. You don't have room for the important stuff. But here's the catch. With just a bit of rearrangement and some prioritization, you would have been able to fit all of the most important tasks, your big rocks, and all of this into your calendar and schedule. Don't believe me? I'll show you. All right, so we got a new schedule. This time, instead of filling up our schedule, metaphorical schedule, with the dumb stuff first, we're gonna put the most important things, and put those in first. So we're gonna put the big rocks in. Now this is gonna be different for every person, what those big rocks are. If you want to be a writer, for example, you should set aside time to write. That'd be a big rock. If you're a dad, setting aside time for family time would be a big rock. Working out, exercising would be a big rock. And you would treat these things basically like a doctor's appointment on your calendar. Like you would block it off and if someone wants to do something during that time, tell them sorry or already got something going on, even if that is working out. It's just whatever is really important, you want to make sure that you get done. You do, you schedule that first. Then after that, you can start putting in some of those, filling in the gaps with the stuff that's not really important, but just a little bit important. Things like work emails. There you go. Of course, you'll need to rearrange things sometimes. So you did some of the stuff that's not too important, but still needs to be done. But you still have room, you still have time for some of that fun stuff that's just mindless. So go ahead, after you've done your big rocks, done the stuff that's sort of important, you can do some bit of mindless web surfing. Put some more in there. Still got plenty of room. Just let it sift through, okay. And here's the thing, there's still room for more. I mean, we probably put more sand in here. Some more fun stuff. It's really heavy. We got the water. This is just like stuff, I don't even know what. It's like not important at all. All right, so as you can see, we we're able to fit in a lot more, including the big rocks. And the key was we had to put the big rocks in first. So my challenge to you this week is as you sit down with your calendar and plan out your week, and if you're not planning, I definitely recommend you tr start doing that. Um, Find out where your big rocks are. What are the most important things that you need to be doing? Again, if you want to be a writer, a big rock would be setting aside time for writing. If you want to be a musician, setting aside time for deliberate practice on whatever instrument it is that you're doing would be a big rock. Family is a big rock. Health is a big rock. At work, you're going to have different big rocks. They're going to pop up every week. The key is, though, is you do those first. Do those first. And as you do that, you're going to find that you're going to be more productive, more effective, and you'll have time for everything else in life. Those emails, those phone calls, those network meetings, it's all going to be able to fit in there, but you have to do the big rocks first. So that's a challenge to you. Until next time, this is Brett McKay telling you to stay. Manly. Well, I'm not sure I'm going to call it staying manly, but what he, the, the big rocks theory, has been one of the most powerful pieces of being able to identify what it is that, that, that is going to get you to move forward. And so 
typically a great way to be able to identify and start to whittle down what your big rocks are is to start by identifying what your roles are. Because as humans, we've got responsibilities, right? You want to, if you've got parents, child is one of your responsibilities and how you care for them, how you show up for your family, how you show up for your business. And if you're an owner or if you're a manager and you've got multiple hats that you need to wear, we need to be able to identify those so that we can associate them with the right goals and begin to move forward. So for how many of you on this call today are owners? Have multiple, multiple responsibilities. Nothing's ever gonna get done as quickly as it possibly should, <laughs> right? One of the things that I have found incredibly helpful is to break down the major components of what that particular role is. So if I'm looking at my role as an owner, I've got owner, business development, HR, right? Client implementation, and then personal education and leader. And I look at those as separate buckets to be able to identify how I want to be for each of those roles. And as we're looking at those bigger goals, we we want to be able to look at if this is really where I want to go, if, and again, that goal has changed, but if my goal is to be able to get here by the end of the year for this role, and that's a, that's the big, under this, this role is this big rock. How can I break that down into small steps, little wins that are going to continuously get me to where I want to be? And here's the rub, guys. If we don't start our, our day with a plan on how to get to that big rock, you're going to be behind the eight ball every day. For those of you that do to-do lists, how many of you have had a day when you skipped it and then it turns into two or three days? And all of a sudden you're at the end of your week and you're like, what the hell just happened? I know I did, I did stuff. There was definitely stuff, but none of it seems to have moved the needle. And I don't feel mentally like I've been able to get anything to move forward. This particular practice, and I know some of you, it, it's gonna, you're going to have a knee-jerk no reaction to what I'm about to say, but I'm going to go there anyway. This practice is tr truly something that needs to be physically with your hands and a writing utensil written out. And in that process of actually writing, what big rocks are on your, your page today? What are the small things that you need to do to take care of that big rock? Maybe we can't take care of that whole big rock in one day. Maybe it needs to stretch two or three days, but there's a couple of small things that you can do to get to that place. The act of writing it down by hand actually stores that information in your subconscious in a different way. If it's typed in, you don't get the same subconscious impact. And the reason that's so critical is because that subconscious mind is always looking for a place to check things off. If you've told it it's got something to do, it's gonna keep fighting to get you there, whether you've got it at the top of your mind or not. And so there's the duplicitous um, impact to that particular practice. When, when Merelda was talking about procrastination, oh, let me tell you what that does to the focus system. When you know that there's a big rock on your plate and it's possibly going to take more time, more energy, more spirit just to get it done, if that is something that is not prioritized for you, it will actually weigh down your ability to focus on the other things that are on your plate because it's tapping you on the shoulder and you know it's going to suck. And so it's going to steal from your ability to be present. There is an awesome book out there. It's been out there forever by Brian Tracy called Eat That Frog. 
And he's talking, the, the, the premise of the book is, uh, I believe it's a quote by Benjamin Franklin, where he said, if, if you go out and eat the biggest, ugliest frog you can find first thing in the morning, the rest of the day is downhill, right? When you're looking at, okay, I'm going to be putting together this to-do list. I know that I've got to put them in some kind of, of sequence. We're going to pick that big rock first because it's going to allow the chemicals in your brain to really start to latch onto. I had a big win first thing in the morning. Mm. Every win starts to come faster and faster and your subconscious mind starts pumping, looking for that next release of dopamine and serotonin. Everybody knows the thrill of checking something off the, the to-do list, right? There's, there's, a little, there's, there's a little adrenaline rush there. When you get into the practice of planning daily for what it is that you're going to accomplish, you actually will uh, create an addiction to that release of serotonin and dopamine. And what that does for your subconscious mind is it pushes it to come up with ideas and solutions to the things that you have planned for usually, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it tends to tap my shoulder at three o'clock in the morning and say, hey, I just figured that out. Why don't you wake up and do something about it? To which I then will try to binge something until at least five, because that feels like an appropriate time to get out of bed. Um, but it is a practice and you will start to notice that when you, when you deviate, when you let it go for two or three days, your energy drains and you start to feel that fog coming back. So let's talk about that to-do list, because if we're taking a moment, and I, I would really recommend that you take a moment at the beginning of your week to identify the roles that, you're gonna, that you have to play and what the big rocks are for those goals that are gonna move you to your purpose. And then every day, we're gonna look at those big rocks and say, okay, what can I do today to pull one of those rocks onto my plate? right? Or part of getting that done. And trust me, your to-do list, when you start, is probably going to be 20 things long, at least, at least, right? That's not helpful. Just to have things to check off is not going to help you buy back three or four hours a week. It's the prioritization that is going to have the biggest impact. So, I want you to think about your to-do list, right? And there's a couple of, of pieces that I wanna give you that are gonna help you not be a victim to the to-do list, to not use it as a whipping post for yourself. And the first thing is don't try to put them in order. Don't try to write them in order the first time. That's not how your brain works. Your brain, typically works like a mind map and you say, oh, I've got to do this thing. Oh, in order to get this done, I've got to do this and this and this and this, and then it's going to pull in something else. Just give yourself five minutes of free form. These are the things that need to be done. And then we've got to go back to the top. And we're going to give each item that's on the to-do list a prioritization. And guys, this is the absolute key to making things speed up and get easier. Your A's are something that has to be done today or there's going to be a repercussion, right? If I don't, if I don't put out payroll, repercussion. If I don't get my laundry all the way done, not exactly a repercussion, right? By the time you get to Sunday, it may be, but at least now you still have underwear. Figure out what has to get done today and there's not allowed to be more than eight things on the have tos today. Those of us that are drivers and high achievers can tend to have a lot of A's in that to-do list. It's not gonna serve you. The B's could get done tomorrow if they have to, but let me tell you, when you get a B checked off of your list on a day, the, the, that dopamine is even more. You're, like I, I have people that I call that I'm like, you know what? I totally checked off like three B's today. Nailed it. And C's are like, if I get this done this week, 
fabulous, but this is a, this is a bonus round. And then you've got to start over again. Once you know what's got to be done today, go back and put them in order of importance of what needs to be done first. A's, every A gets a number one, two, three, four, five, whatever it is. And then you go back for your B's and then you go back for your C's. And what this does, guys, and this is so impactful, we are living in a space where the interruptions are constant and the structure has completely flipped. If you are in the middle of A3 and child number four walks in on fire, you need to be able to go put child number four out and then you can come back and be back in, in A4 as opposed to looking at your desk and trying to figure out where you were and what, you, what space you needed to be in, right? That ability to reconnect and stay focused is really where we prevent ourselves from moving into the little rocks and the sand and the water that can happen. Because psychologically, once you've been interrupted, there's a part of your brain that's seeking a little bit of comfort because you were taken out of the space that you were in. You're either gonna find that in having a structure to move forward or in something that's not necessarily a producing activity. Does that make sense? Can I get some, some nods or at least a raise of an eyebrow? Yeah. So it's going to take usually when you first start, you're going to want to invest maybe 10 minutes in the morning. Or if you're really super hot, you're going to do it the night before. I, I still haven't achieved that level of hotness yet. But as you get faster at it, you're going to be able to do it in about three to five minutes in the morning. And it's going to save you at least 30 minutes a day in the beginning. As you start to progress forward, I have found that I will typically buy back three to four hours a week by staying on purpose and staying connected to that dopamine, staying connected to those wins that are gonna move me forward. And you'll notice here that I put email as a task. Spending time in your email, answering everything as it comes through is not gonna serve you. And it's also not gonna give you a place to be thoughtful or to put it into your task list in a, in a way that's responsible to what you need to be for that day. So give it a space, give it a time. And if you need to create a time block on your calendar, create that time block so that you can get through it. But I would propose this practice to you. For those of you that, are, that have a calendar that you run by that is rigid, Listen, we all know that, like, I can tend to average, what is it, Michelle, like seven to 10 Zoom calls a day easily. It doesn't leave me very much time to be able to, to like block out for these specific things. If you've got them in a prioritized task list, you can fit them in around those other pieces that need to be done. And if you were able, not able to get to completion on an item, You've got the ability now to go back and not have the confusion or the disconnect to be able to, to get that thing checked off your list after the interruption. So don't worry about blocking time for each individual thing. Just know where you're going. So there's gonna be, you're gonna need to be able to put yourself into some kind of practice. And I have, guys, Every six months, I go through all of the new time management apps and all of it. Burp, 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 burp. I will tell you, solid meh across the board. None of them really give you the ability to connect the way that you need to and to be able to psychologically train to get things moving. I, again, I'm a, I'm a Franklin Covey fanatic. I'm actually going to send you a PDF of the Franklin Covey system that's like a month that you can print out. When there used to be Franklin Covey stores, you could actually just call and say, I'm Marie's client. I work with, at that time I was Lipstick Logic, and they would know exactly what to package up for you. 
and get you out the door. But unfortunately, all the stores are closed. So if you're going to go online, there's one piece that is critical that for as they try to sell prettier and cuter things, they tend to leave out. So I wanna make sure that you've got this piece, is that this daily prioritized task list right here, this is the magic. Nobody cares about the, 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 the numbers on the side. If you've got things that you've gotta do, but this is where the activity actually gets done. And what's nice about this system is it comes with a, and I'll actually grab mine, it comes with, this fantastic weekly compass that allows you to identify your big rocks and then or your roles and then put the big rocks in there so every day you move it over and you move it over and you can see where you're going for that week which is associated with where you need to go for that year talk about crossing things off the task list how many of you reconnect to your yearly goals on a daily basis right that's the power of this and when you get into that experience trust me you're going to have feelings about your planner that you weren't expecting to feel but it's the training ground for where you need to go so i want to kind of open it up um because i know i threw a lot of theories out there um Can we open up the mics at this time? So guys, I want to I want to hear a little bit from you. How many of you have a a a Oh my gosh, it's 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Holy junk. Um so I will say we're on time. <laughs> if anybody does want to stay for questions, I've made time if you would like to stay for those of you that are Moving on to the next thing. Thank you for joining us. We will follow up with all of the resources, but y'all know I like to be timely. So I will say goodbye and send actual physical hugs to, to all of you. Um, if anybody has any questions, you're more than welcome to hang for a couple of minutes, but you'll see your follow-up email in your inbox by noon with all kinds of resources for you. All right, guys, thank you very much. If there's no questions, we're going to go ahead and end the session. Wait, don't end. Question, that yearly goal sheet mm -hmm. that you have, that is like a smaller piece that you just move throughout or do you just keep it at the front of your book? Or so It has this great plastic. Okay. You slide it goes, and every day you flip it to the next day so that you can continue to move it with you. Okay. Yeah, and so you get like a pad of those and then you can modify as you go as well for those yearly goals. Exactly. To accomplish, right? <laughs> yeah, and checking those things off. Talk about a high. Yep, no, I, I love my lists. My husband still thinks I'm crazy because he's IT guru, you know. But <laughs> That's all right. You let him do that. Works. It, he, he's the best multitasker I've ever known. So he's, God bless him. he's got a system. Right? Okay, thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and guys, if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself. Make sure that you connect with Meralda. She's got a tremendous amount of resources to be able to help us move forward, whether we've experienced loss in our own lives through family, because we know people are losing family members all over the place, or you need to work through the loss of what your business was going to look like, the loss of what your time looks like, the loss of what your relationship with your children look like. Um, <laughs> it's a stressful time and it, it's time, this is the time to reach out. So thank you very, very much guys. I appreciate every single one of you. And um, next week we are gonna be talking about um, how to impactfully use body language in your Zoom meetings so that you do not appear to be the talking head with zero mm -hmm. emotion. So we'll look forward to seeing you next week and you'll get your early bird sign up in the follow-up email. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.